Lady and gentlemen, thank you for watching and welcome to the English News Open Food Radio Television Station and Newspaper. I'm Hung Kek and following are the headlines as usual. Bình Phước boasting implementations of the Directive on Religion. Bình Phước enhancing worker health care. Prime Minister asked for a sufficient power supply under any circumstances. Vietnam seeing positive export sight in the first quarter. Coffee and pepper prices forecast to keep rising. And now other detail. In compliance with a party directive aimed at improving understanding of the new circumstances faced by the people, ethnic groups and religious community, local party organization, government and community have effectively implemented this initiative, promoting citizen empowerment and giving more attention to religious activity. To achieve a practical and effective understanding of the population situation, the Mass Mobilization Board, the Vietnam Fatherland Front, and social political organizations at various levels have progressively refined their matters and content. Their efforts aim to be practical and relevant to real-life conditions, providing advice and tackling issues at the grassroots level. In the first quarter of this year alone, they conducted 1,235 sessions with 720 citizens and resolved 157 out of 232 petitions received. The population greatly appreciates the dedication of party committees and government bodies at all levels in consistently meeting with citizens. Special emphasis is placed on the roles of leaders at all levels in engaging in dialogue with the people, listening and promptly addressing their legitimate complaints, concerns and aspirations. The Benfield Province of People Committee emphasized the proactive monitoring of workplace environment, the ugly direction of occupational diseases at high-risk job sites, and the investigation of such diseases to set work work right. These measures are part of an initiative to about uh, health care and prevent occupational diseases across various RNC units and locality. The chairpersons of the Provincial People's Committee has tasked the Department of Health with leading efforts in collaboration with other departments and district level governments to evaluate and enhance the workforce, infrastructure and equipment of health facilities in accordance with regulatory standards. This effort aims to meet the management needs of occupational health and worker health care as well as disease prevention. Educational programs are also being deployed to ensure workplace comply fully with occupational health and disease prevention regulations. Furthermore, the Department of Labor, Invalids and Social Affairs is working closely with the Department of Health to intensify the inspection and regulations of occupational health and safety at workplace identified at high risks rigorously addressing any violations of labor laws, including failures to comply with safety and health regulations for workers. To bolster early warning and monitoring capability, as well as update the environmental status date based for enhanced government management of environmental protection, Benfuk had recently pushed into automatic monitoring system for wastewater and emissions. The Department of Natural Resources and Environment has set up and launched two server systems. The first system continuously receives data on enterprises' discharge activities, and the second manages and gathers data from service quarters and air quality monitoring stations. Furthermore, three automated air quality monitoring stations have been established in Dong Xoai, Trân Thành, and Dong Phu, along with five automated service water monitoring stations in the upstream regions of the Bé River, the Dong Nai River, the Saigon River, Suối Zai Lake, and the Dong Xoai Water Supply Lake. The province also has 23 continuous automated wastewater monitoring stations and 17 continuous automated emissions monitoring stations installed by enterprises, which send data directly to the department. 
Since their implementation, these automated wastewater and emissions monitoring systems have significantly supported pollution control and broader environmental management efforts across the province. They have enhanced environmental awareness among industrial park investors and local emitters, playing a key role in reducing and preventing environmental incidents. Let's begin domestic news with latest activity of Prime Minister Pham Min Chin. Prime Minister Pham Min Chin on April 20 asked ministries, sectors, agencies, localities, and businesses to make forecasts on the situation and prepare response plans to ensure sufficient power supply for production and daily activities under any circumstances. At a working session with relevant ministries, sectors, and agencies on the production and supply of electricity, especially in peak times of 2024 and following years, Prime Minister Chin pointed to the need to focus on five major issues, including of production, distribution, and price. He underlined the need to make sure that all regions receive adequate power supply, especially in the hot season in the north from May to July, and to effectively operate and exploit the highest capacity of all power plants. The government leader asked ministries and sectors to draft legal documents facilitating power trading activities and submit them to the government for consideration at an early date. Ladies and gentlemen, the recovery of the world's economy, including many major export markets of Vietnam, is a positive sign for the Southeast Asian nation's import and export activity in the coming time. According to the Foreign Trade Agency under the Ministry of Industry and Trade, total export-import turnover hit over 178 billion U.S. dollars in the first quarter of this year, up 15.5% year-on-year, resulting in a trade surplus of over 8 billion U.S. dollars. Exports performed particularly well, with an estimated value of over 93 billion U.S. dollars, reflecting a 17% year-on-year growth while imports reached nearly 85 billion US dollars, representing a 14% increase. In this quarter, 16 commodities reported an export value of over 1 billion US dollars each, accounting for 82% of the total export revenue, two higher than the 14 commodities recorded in the first quarter of 2023. Meanwhile, there were 17 commodities with import turnover of over 1 billion US dollars each, accounting for 76% of the total. Experts anticipated that Vietnam's trade activities, especially export to key markets in Europe and America, will face both challenges and opportunities this year. The relevant authorities will closely monitor market developments and changes in partners' policies to propose appropriate solutions and develop a variety of traditional and new export markets. The prices of Vietnamese coffee and pepper are forecast to continue increasing due to limited supply while the export of this product has also enjoyed relative growth, according to Insider. Domestic coffee prices continuously set new records and are about to approach 100,000 Vietnam dongs, about 4 US dollars, per kilogram. In the beginning of April, the average purchase price of coffee in Central Highlands provinces is 98,600 Vietnam dongs per kilogram. Vietnam shipped nearly 600,000 tons of coffee abroad in the first quarter of this year, earning 1.9 billion US dollars, up only 3% in volume but up 54% in value year on year. Export coffee prices have increased, but there's not much coffee left in stock. Regarding pepper, Preliminary statistics of the Vietnam Pepper and Spice Association showed that Vietnam exported 12,368 tons of pepper worth 53 million US dollars in the first 16 days of March. The surge of pepper prices to low inventories and strong demand in the US market in the last three months of 2023. The late harvest season in Dac Nong province was also a problem while a temporary shortage of supply led to an increase in domestic prices. And that's all for today on the News of Bunfuk Radio, television station and newspaper. Once again, thank you for watching and goodbye for now.